Well, yesterday, at least two bombs exploded along the route of the Boston Marathon. Now, as we tape this, it's less than 24 hours after the event, so details on casualties and especially suspects are still sketchy, to say the least. But as of this moment, it looks like three killed, over 170 injured, many of them critically. And since we don't have much information to go on as far as the bombing details are concerned, I would like to indulge in some speculation. Now, not about motives or suspects, since that would be madness, but rather on the one thing that more and more in America today amplifies tragedies far beyond the boundaries of the actual damage they cause. I'm referring, of course, to the news media. Now, Scott, the mainstream media cannot report on so much as the fall of a sparrow without vague whispers about right-wing extremists. We all know what they mean. These people have spent four years, and effectively, I might add, creating a narrative about gun-loving Tea Party nuts as an immediate threat to your children's safety. When this bomb went off, I found, speaking for myself, as I do every time something horrific happens these days, I was more concerned with the potential bludgeon being handed this government and their loyal steno pool than I was about the actual event that created the potential bludgeon in the first place. Well, I, I don't uh, subscribe to cable TV, as, as you guys know. Um, and uh, I pulled up on my iPad a, a Ustream channel that was, that was uh, streaming CBS News and listened to somebody named Scott, who may be Scott Pelley, but I'm not sure, talking about this thing. And the thing that struck me about this media coverage on CBS anyway uh, throughout this event was two hours after the event, Scott Pelley was still being ever so careful to not indicate that these, that these explosions could have been caused by anything intentional. I mean, he was still basically saying, we don't know whether this was an accident or something that happened intentionally, and so the authorities haven't told us what to say, and, and so we're not going to say anything about it. I watched one 15-second clip and immediately said, that's a bombing. Every person in America who saw that video said, that's a bombing. But somehow the mainstream media feels that they can't go out on a limb and say it's a bombing, but they can go out on the limb and start speculating mm. about who might be behind it, especially those who speculated that it might be some right-wing extremist group. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Steve, I maintain, and I'd like to know if you agree, that, that everything is politicized today. Everything. For example, yeah. David Axelrod said that President Obama thinks the bombings may be related to tax day. Hmm. I wonder who could be behind tax day protests. Barney Frank said that no tax cut would have helped us deal with this, even as people were being bundled off of the bloody sidewalks. Isn't this a pattern, Steve? There's a tragedy. Then within hours or minutes even, the left is trying to politicize the tragedy. And when we on the right respond to this craven opportunism, we are demonized for picking a fight, but not for fighting back. This, this is shameful, what the president did. To allow David Axelrod to expose that kind of thought in public is a shameful act. This is the man, you talk about a pattern. This is the man who said the police acted stupidly. Mm -hmm. This is the man who says uh, he had his press secretary go out there uh, just on Monday to say that he couldn't possibly comment on an ongoing trial. I'm talking about the Gosnell trial. This is shameful, the way he ducks behind some issues where he doesn't want to speak out, and he, and, he, mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, and he lets his underlings leak out these little things that, that, that might possibly, potentially harm his political opponent. Meanwhile, we have an enemy out there. We don't know who that enemy is, but we have an enemy out there who, who blew up the Boston Marathon to make some kind of political point. You've got people out there with, with missing limbs. This seems to have been the intent of the bomb, by the way, was to hit the maximum number of runners at the, at, at the perfect time to blow away their legs because they're runners. This is the work of an enemy, and we have a shameful president committing shameful, despicable acts of hiding behind the skirts of David Axelrod and his own little White House spokesman, Jay Carney. It's shameful. Yeah, that's right. Cowardly. We've seen it many times. Saw it with Trayvon Martin and the whole thing. So the question is, will we find the Boston Marathon bomber? I have no doubt we will, and sooner rather than later. And then one of three things is going to happen. If, as at Fort Hood, the subject turns out to be a Muslim, we'll be told that this is an individual who's not representative of the larger group and that using this event to demonize Muslims would be un-American. On the other hand, if the suspect can be useful to left-wing causes, as at Sandy Hook, then we'll be told that the individual behind the tragedy is in fact representative of a horrible society-wide madness and the event must be our call to action to demonize a larger group of innocent people and advance some left-wing legislative agenda. Or finally, 
If after the Tea Party right wing speculation doesn't pan out and the suspect turns out to be a lone wolf or a disturbed teen, then wait until the slanders have done their damage and then without any shame at all, post the names and photographs of these murderers and give them 24 seven news coverage so that the next lone wolf or disturbed team has yet another chance to see how immortal fame is easily achieved in the morality free world of our Kardashian era. For those of you who think that the country is falling apart, that thousands of things are unraveling before your eyes, let me do a little debt consolidation for you. The decline of America is not due to a hundred problem or a thousand or due to individual politicians or groups of politicians. It's the press. 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 There's no press. For PJTV, I'm Bill Whittle.